The Nintendo DS is the first console that I ever bought new. Me and my sisters all pitched in and we bought a brand spanking new crimson and black DS Lite. And then three months later, the DSi came out. But even in the shadow of its cooler, younger brother, the DS and the DS Lite were still incredible systems that offered the most unique gaming experience around. And unique is the choice word here because, uh... But despite its technical limitations, it does deserve to be looked at again in 2022 because believe it or not, the DS is literally only two months away from being a legal adult. This thing is about to push two decades old, and there's a lot of people out there who missed out on everything and didn't get to make any memories with it. But even the people that did grow up with this thing still might have missed out on one particular part of the DS's history. The homebrew scene. Alright, so you decided you want to run some DS homebrew. How are you going to do it? Usually you're going to do it from this slot right here, the DS game card slot. Technically there's ways to do it with the GBA slot, but it's a- it, no, just don't do it. The easiest way to do it is to pick up one of these, a DS flash card. It's kind of just like a DS game that has a micro SD card slot on it. And back in the DS homebrew scene's heyday, oh man, there was no shortage of these things. They were so common that you'd have a hard time keeping them out of your house. Mom, they're getting in again. Let's see, we had the R4, the Ace card, the DSTT, the M3, those were some of the big hitters, and I guess to some extent, Daytel's action replay kind of counts. They all had their own strengths and weaknesses, some of them had spin-offs and variations, but it was usually just to introduce DSi and 3DS support later on. And of course, my personal favorite flash card is the R4 3DS Upgrade Snoopy Revolution for 3DS, 2DS, NDSi, New 3DS, 2DS, LL, XL, Dual Core Wood Kernel Update. The one that I've got right here is the Gateway Blue card. Long story short, it's not really intended to be a DS flash cart. It was for a homebrew thing on the 3DS, but essentially it's just an R4 flash cart. Also, a funny little footnote with these things is that each one of them shows up as a random game to try and trick the system into letting it run. Alright, you have your flash cart, but now what do you do with it? Well, you could break that question down into four different categories. You can play community-made games, run homebrew apps, emulate other consoles, and commit multiple federal crimes. We'll start out by looking at a homebrew app called Nitro Tracker. It's actually really sick. It's a pretty well-featured music production program for chiptune-style music. I even got it to sample my very own bruh. bruh. But uh, I will be honest, I don't really know anything about making music in general. This is all way over my head. I just know it's impressive software for being on a DS. Anyway, one smooth transition later, we'll check out some homebrew games made by community members. A really impressive one is DS Craft, a Minecraft clone that Microsoft does not want you to know about. <sighs> it's really bare bones, and it resembles Minecraft Alpha more than anything that's out today. It does have an okay selection of blocks to pick from, and it mostly just suffers from the DS's lack of good controls for any 3D games at all. However, it does get an A-plus from me, since despite these limitations, I was able to make a minimalist rendition of Old Spice deodorant. It's definitely Definitely more of a cool showcase of what programmers can do with the DS homebrew stuff than in an actual game. But even then, it is still crazy that they managed to get a game like this, even in its current state, on the DS, with just community-made tools. And how could I possibly talk about homebrew without the homebrew community's version of Frank's Red Hot? I put that sh on everything. Doom is here, because of course it is, and it plays really well. Once again, it does suffer from the DS's controls, but not as much since Doom is less reliant on needing to look up and down than Minecraft is. It's a fitting addition to the DS's homebrew scene, and a pretty good way to play Doom on the go, to be honest. This one is actually pretty notorious. Still Alive DS is a port of Portal the Flash version, which itself is a 2D side-scrolling puzzle game that's inspired by Portal's mechanics. It's actually a really great game, and it complements the original Portal really nicely. It's a lot of fun. I played the pants off this game when I was a kid, and I was really excited to go and download it again. But sometime between then and now, someone made another Portal-inspired game for the DS called Portal DS, which I thought was still alive DS, but no, it's a f***ing Foley 3D Portal game on the DS. Yeah, needless to say, I am blown away by this. I've never seen this before until just now. Like, this was not an actual team of people professionally making games that made this. This was just DS homebrew community members. The stuff that they were able to do near the end of the DS's lifespan with homebrew was crazy. Anyway, about the actual game itself, I would have loved to play more of it, but it was just really difficult to get the DS to do what I was trying to get it to do, once again because of the limited controls. Overall though, you can absolutely color me impressed with this one. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Alright, let me tell you what PCBWay does. They specialize in prototyping and low volume production of printed circuit boards. You know, these things. 
They really are a one-stop shop for all your electronic prototyping needs. They do standard PCBs, advanced multi-layer HDI PCBs, flex PCBs, and the cherry on top is that they'll even give you the option to have them pre-assembled for you at their factory. And in addition to PCBs, they're also branching out into some new services that includes 3D printing and CNC machining. Personally, I am really excited to give those services a try, since I've always wanted to have the shells of my projects printed professionally. And CNC machining? Oh my god, it could open up a world of new options for custom heat sinks in my mini consoles. I am so excited that I get to work with PCBWay. New users get a $5 welcome bonus on their first order, and 10 PCBs are just $5, so it's literally just free. Plus, their build time is only 24 hours. Pre-assembly services start at $30 for 10, plus you get free global shipping. And if anything I talked about piqued your interest, head down to the link in the description to see what PCB Way can offer you. Alright, what goes better together than homebrew and emulation? The DS has no shortage of emulation options. You're pretty well covered when it comes to any system from the Sega Genesis and older. And I say Sega Genesis specifically and not Super Nintendo because the DS has some, uh, issues with it. <coughs> Sick. But I had a great time playing Sega Genesis games, Game Boy games, and NES games. You know, what really surprised me, though, is that GBA emulation is now really trivial. People used to spend a lot of money on a flash cart called the Supercard DS2 because it had its own SOC on the cartridge, specifically there to emulate GBA games. And if you didn't have this specific flash cart, you were kind of out of luck. Man, imagine invalidating thousands of people's purchasing decision with a 260 kilobyte file. But yeah, coming back to the present, GBA runs great on any flash cart now. I didn't experience any slowdowns or glitches other than maybe like one second of stuttering on a loading screen. There's also a handful of retro PC emulators out there for the DS, but I don't really have the funds to hire an archaeologist for this video, so I won't be checking any of those out. Overall though, the DS is a really good emulation device for older titles, and the control scheme is just perfect for it. Now though, we get into the, uh, legal gray area part of flash carts. You probably already assumed that these things can boot up and play regular retail DS ROMs of actual cartridges, and you'd be right. They play them flawlessly. Well, I guess you might lose out on a couple more advanced features on some cartridges, like on Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they had an IR sensor inside of the cartridge to communicate with something called the Pokewalker. It was a pedometer Nintendo released to compete with the Tamagotchi craze of the 2000s. But forgettable accessories aside, you couldn't even tell that you were risking jail time to play Super Mario 64 DS. You know what else is cool is you can actually still use DS download play on most games. It's a great way to make your friends unwitting accomplices. And remember kids, make sure you own the cartridges for any ROMs that you play, otherwise someone might project their guilt about it to you on the internet, and we don't want that. I of course ripped all of my ROMs from the cartridges that you see here in my hand, that I physically own, and are made of atoms, and not pixels. Another great use for flash carts are playing ROM hacks. ROM hacks are the natural fusion of homebrew and retail games. There's quite a bit to choose from on the DS. Some of the more popular ones are ROM hacks for games like the Pokemon series that add back Pokemon that were only catchable in the other version of the game, or they increase the difficulty, change up the sprites, etc. There's a lot of fan translations out there too for games that only came out in other regions like Japan. That's something that happened a lot on the DS. You know, I really owe it to the DS homebrew community for finally letting me play let me see here, uh... Puzzle Series Volume 12 in English. To wrap everything up, if you're interested in homebrew and you have an old DS lying around, or you just want to play DS games on the original hardware, because let's face it, this ain't it. Trust me, a flash cart is the way to go. You can pick them up on Amazon for the price of like two gallons of gas, which is only, oh Jesus, like $15 apparently. Oh my God. But at least it is all you need. You don't need to mod your DS or install a mod chip or anything like that. They just work. Things do get a little hairy when you try and use them with a DSi or a 3DS, but nowadays most cards already have the support for them built in. And do keep in mind that some of the cheaper flash cards have something called a time bomb built into them, which is really, really dumb. It just makes it so they stop working after a while. But they don't actually stop working, because you can just set the date back on the calendar in the DS settings, and then they work again. Yeah, it's really weird, so try and buy one that doesn't have that. Alright, that's about it though. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring today's video. Check the link in the description to save $5 off your first order with them. And another thanks goes out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are the real deal. I really appreciate it. And let me know in the comments which console you want me to look at with Homebrew next. And then subscribe to make sure that you actually get to see that video. Oh, and leave a comment about any standout DS Homebrew stuff that I didn't touch on in this video because there is a lot out there and I just wanted to look at a select few. Anyways, that's it for this one. I will see you in the next video.